And amen. Thank you, Elder D, for the prayer. I'm going to let you know more about our preacher, Dr. Bennett Blake. She originally comes from Jamaica, is a graduate of Andrews University with her Bachelor of Social Work, Master of Divinity, and Doctor of Ministry degrees. Pastor Blake travels the world proclaiming the living Christ to the dying people. She spends a lot of time going around the world and her mission is reaching out to the community, preaching to the unsaved and teaching the saved to serve. Exactly what she is doing even today. We thank God for Dr. Blake and over to you, my sister. God's children are waiting to hear you speak to them. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm trying to change my, my gadget here. Um, my other one isn't working. So I'm really hoping that you guys can hear me um, well this, um, this evening, uh, this morning rather, but good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a privilege to be with, wonderful you can hear. Um, it's a privilege to be with all of you this morning. I trust that you are being blessed and um, experiencing the goodness and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to center my thing here a little bit, if you will just allow me. Um, uh, all right, let's see, let's see. All right, all right, all right. So we are going to get right into it this morning and trust Amen. that the Lord will just grant us his blessings as we continue to worship him and trust him in the beauty Amen. of holiness. Won't you pray with me? Thank you so much. Our Father in heaven, we bless you for the privilege you've given to us to worship you. Now I pray that you'll speak through me to us and allow your name to be exalted. I pray that you'll bless your people in a special way, oh God. Let your will be accomplished and we thank you. We bless you, we praise you. You've been so good, you've been so good to us. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's amen. get right into this, um, this, um, this morning. I'm going to actually come to us um, from the book of Luke chapter 11, the book of Luke chapter 11. Since this is your prayer time, I wanted to do something on prayer and I probably will um, continue um, in presenting some different aspects of prayer as we go along for the rest of the week. But this morning, actually Luke 11 is uh, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite texts. Um, there's just this part of Luke um, that I just simply love. And where I want to kind of focus in on this morning is verses um, nine, verses nine through uh, 10, nine and 10. And the Bible says, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given to you. Um, seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened to you for everyone who ask receives and he who seeks finds and to him who not it will be open. I love the text, I'm telling you the truth, I love the text. Um, in this text, we find a threefold. As a matter of fact, we understand Jesus was praying and the disciples came to Jesus and they asked Jesus to teach them, you know, teach them to pray, they saw him. Something about Jesus um, praying got the attention of the disciples and they came to Jesus and wanted to learn how to pray. As a matter of fact, we are told that John's disciples also asked him to teach them to pray. Something about prayer uh, uh, um, that gets us. Prayer is not something that, that comes naturally. From the text we are learning, that prayer is something that is taught. Prayer is something that is learned and should be learned. Um, we are not all born great prayers, right? But as we continue to pray and as we seek the Lord's uh, leading and the power of the spirit, it will lead us to do that which um, we can do best in communion with God. And so the disciples saw Jesus, maybe they were impressed, but it got their attention. And so they asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And, and so the Bible said, he taught them the Lord's prayer, which we know today, you know, our father, word in heaven, so on and so forth. So he taught them that. 
And after that, Jesus went into a parable um, in order to emphasize, I believe it was, what he had just said to them in regards to um, the Lord's prayer. Um, you know, our Father, Lord in heaven, so on and so forth. Jesus uh, um, got a little bit deeper into this aspect of teaching the disciples, teaching the disciples how to pray. And, and so he went into, um, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find. It's powerful. So within this text, within this text, I noticed that there is a threefold condition. The first thing I noticed that pops out at me as I read these verses is there th that there is a threefold condition. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, in, in terms of prayer, so it's ask, seek and knock you notice that you, you notice that right yes we notice that um this mm. three four condition to prayer ask seek and knock and you know there was a time when i wonder why jesus just tell the disciples you know to ask seek and knock i mean that's the same thing isn't it but when i studied the text i realized wait a minute there's something deeper and to this asking and seeking and knocking and and i realized yeah. it is very simple right a very simple thing Ask. It's a simple word. As a matter of fact, when I look at um, ask, seek, and knock, I realize that it forms the acronym ASK, A S K, right? Ask, seek, knock. It forms the, the very essence of what we do in prayer. And the Amen. fact is, that's all God wants us to do is ask. Simple, mm. very simple. Asking is something we do every single day, every day we ask somebody a question, right? So the parable urges a resolute persistence. Jesus could have simply said to the disciples, ask, you know, you know what I'm saying? And everyone who asks, receive, and it goes on. No, but Jesus said, ask. Everyone who asks, receives, seek. Everyone who seeks, uh, find, knock. Everyone who knocks, it will be open unto them. So Jesus mm -hmm. is simple um, affirming or, or uh, uh, let's simply say Paul possibly affirmed what Jesus said uh, when he wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. There's something awesome about this aspect. And this praying without ceasing doesn't mean that we uh, um, live um, on our knees, you know, um, all day long without stopping. But there's something I want to kind of um, get into that a little bit tomorrow. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. So you you need to come back tomorrow. So invite someone to join us tomorrow because I want to get into that aspect of, of what this really means. But but for tonight, I just want to introduce this aspect of this ask, seek, and knock, right? And so prayer should be um, um be uninterrupted. It should never be interrupted. There should always be that constancy of prayer. The, the, the mindset should always be in prayer. The relationship we have with God, we should always be a prayerful people. Um, and, and, and so nothing should prevent our prayer from achieving its desired purpose. That's really what Jesus is saying. Nothing should prevent our prayers from achieving its desired purpose when we seek and pray according to the will of God. So asking is very simple. As I mentioned before, we do it every day. We ask for favors. We ask for blessings. We ask for protection. As we pray this morning, we are going to be asking God uh, for something. I think this is the most common part of prayer. When we pray, we are always asking God for something. It's just amazing that sometimes we say, okay, we're not going to ask God for anything this morning. We're just going to give God thanks. And we just can't help ourselves. We go right back into asking God for something because it's so natural to ask. Um, so we are always asking, right? But oftentimes, I don't know if you've ever noticed that so many times we ask, but we do not receive. Have you noticed that? I've prayed prayers. I mean, fervent prayers of ask God for some things and still just don't receive them. And so I'm always troubled. Jesus said, ask, uh, um, um, seek, knock. And, you know, we don't get. I don't know if I have a witness. I don't know if I have anyone who will say with me, Pastor, I'm with you. I've been there. But, but I've experienced that asking and not receiving, right? And I recognize that it is not because God is reluctant in answering our prayers, but oftentimes it is because we are reluctant to persist in prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We tend to grow lazy. You know, I love Ian Bounds. Ian Bounds says, um, 
a lazy man cannot pray because prayer is hard work. <laughs> and if you're lazy, you're not going to want to work hard, right? And so we tend to grow lazy in our prayer. We tend to quit. We tend to give up when God doesn't answer us just when we want um, something to happen. You know, we think that God doesn't want to. Listen, some blessings, right? We get them instantly. You know, we really do. I remember just praying and asking God for a parking spot the other day. I went to the hospital to do a visit for one of my members. And I, I know it was a struggle to find parking. And as soon as I drove up, prayed the prayer, drove up, and there was parking right at the gate of the hospital. That had to be God, I'm telling you. Um, and so some things God answer right away. You know what I'm saying? But there are some blessings. There are some things that will come only by a continued, persistent seeking and knocking. Where asking is not enough. You just can't can't stop at asking, right? Sometimes we may not receive what we are seeking immediately because the prayer, we need to understand that prayer is more than just getting something from God. And I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. It's more than just getting a blessing from God. A, a prayer yes. is also about the development of our faith. It's about a deeper mm -hmm. connection of the seeker to the giver. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There needs to be a deep, a, a, um, deep connection with God. For too many, mm -hmm. too many times we, we come to God and we just want God to do favors for us and we give nothing to God. We don't serve God. We don't worship God. Um, and my child is in trouble. Oh, pray for my child. But your child have nothing to do with God. And I'm not saying that God is not merciful and we should not ask a prayer. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm simply saying that oftentimes we tend to just rest on getting something from God. You know, that's our prayer. Our prayer ought to develop our faith. Prayer is about faith development and it's about a deeper commitment with God. My prayer should drive me uh, to a deeper commitment with God. So he says, ask. Mm -hmm. And if you have not received when you ask, then you got to go to the second level and that is to seek. And so the verb seek implies effort. It implies that you got to put some work into this thing. It means, you know, searching when, when you seek, you know, you, you, you lose your key. Um, you don't just look here and look there. You got to get somewhere. You got to get to work. You got to find your key. You're going to turn everything upside down. You're going to look, you're going to search because what you need is those keys to get into your car, to drive home or, or to drive to work or whatever it is. But you are going to seek for that key. You are searching for something. You're going to hunt for it, right? You're looking for something and you're going to pursue it until you find it because it's important. Am I mm -hmm. making sense? All right. Mm -hmm. But then you seek, you ask, you seek, and you still don't receive what you are seeking. Then the text goes on to say, no, nah, Jesus is generous enough, folks. He's just generous. Jesus wants to show us, listen, listen, I'm a willing God who is willing to give you what you need as long as you pray according to my will. You know what I'm saying? So he goes on to knock. And the word knock implies persistence mm -hmm. and earnestness. You oh, want yes. something? Hmm. Listen, if you travel... You, 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 you get home, you, 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 you're tired, you get home. And there is, um, you can't find your key to get into the door, but you know someone else is on the inside. And what you're going to do, you're going to knock, right? And, and you know somebody's in there, you know they can let you in, you don't have your key, you're gonna keep knocking. You're not gonna stop knocking until somebody comes to the door because you need to get inside. Am I making sense? I um, but you don't knock soft, right? You knock. They don't hear you, you knock and you knock louder and the knocking gets louder because you know somebody's inside. Maybe they fall asleep, maybe they're in the back or something to that effect, but you know someone is in there. They can let you in. You don't have your key to get in. And so you are going to stand there and you are going to knock. As a matter of fact, the verb knock, the word is actually in the future tense, means that it is something that happens outside of yourself. That's what it really means, mm -hmm. that you are doing the knocking uh, uh, but you are on the outside knocking. The opening of the door is not the action of the person who is knocking, but the person who is inside. It's the future tense. So the person on the outside is knocking, but you are not the one responsible for the opening. So if you want that door to be open, you got to keep knocking because there's somebody on the inside who has the power and the ability to open that door to let you in. If you really want to get inside that home, you're never going to move from there. You're going to keep knocking 
walking because you know somebody is there to let you in. Mm -hmm. The person, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter how long the person takes to come to the door to open it, you will stand there and you will knock until you get in. That's what Jesus is saying to us. Ask, and if it doesn't come right away, you seek, you pursue it. And if it delays, then you keep knocking and you don't stop knocking until. Mm. It is opened. You will yes. not get, you will not get unless you ask and you will not find unless you seek and you will not, it's something will not be opened to you unless you knock. So faith Amen. ask and hope seek and love not. The threefold condition of prayer is ask or seek and knock. I know my time is running, so I'm just going to get this quick. I'm going to get this to us. Listen, listen, listen. So, so if that's all there was to prayer, prayer is, in, it, it is inadequate. It's unaccomplished. It means nothing. If all we do is ask, seek, and knock, then our prayer means nothing. Zip, 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 nothing, not a zero. Because mm. while there is a threefold condition to prayer, there is also a threefold promise to prayer. Listen what the text says. Everyone who asks what receives, he who not seeks finds, and to him who not it will be opened. And my time is running, so I gotta get it. Um, um, so, so listen, so while there is a threefold condition, there is a threefold promise. The text, this particular text is usually used as one of the most precious promises and encouragement um, um, to prayer. But this text is far more than a promise encouraging us to pray. This promise or this text rather is a declaration of the basis on which God will receive or which God will answer his people on the or the declaration on the basis on which we would receive answers from God. Mm. So the threefold mm. condition is ask, seek, and knock, but there is a threefold promise. It will be, you will get, you, you, it will be a given, you will receive rather, you will find, and it will be opened. Are you getting me? Are you getting me today, to, to, to this morning? So, so, so then according to the mm. words of Jesus, Prayer, therefore, consists of two sides. That's why you can't just ask, knock, and seek. If you're not getting the other side, then prayer means nothing. It's worthless. Hmm. Hmm. So prayer hmm. has two sides. The human and the divine. The human side is the asking, the seeking, the knocking. And the divine side is the answering. Are we clear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prayer, prayer is incomplete without an answer. I'm going to say that again. Prayer mm -hmm. is incomplete without an answer. If the answer mm -hmm. does not come, then the asking should not cease. Hey. Ask and answering go together hand in hand. It's like mm -hmm. a coin. Prayer is like a coin. I wish I had a coin here to show you right now where is my purse i wish i had a coin but you know what i'm talking about prayer is like a coin right a coin yeah you have i'm not sure what what you have there for your coin uh-huh uh um but but you know you have one side or like a bill right a, 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 right a paper uh bill a paper dollar a paper um what is it that you use? Um, I'm trying to remember right. something. So right. there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. So it's like mm. a coin, right? One side does not exist without the other. You do not have a one-sided coin. Mm. You do not have a one-sided dollar. Are we together? Man. Mm -hmm. Man. It Man. must have both sides, right? One does not exist without the other. So then I say unto you, ask, and what it will be given. Seek, mm. you will find. Knock, it will be opened. That's it. That's it. Mm. That's it. A prayer is incomplete. Our prayers are incomplete uh, 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 without answers. Now, un understand mm. me. Understand me. We, we must understand. We must understand. We always need to understand that there are times when the answer will not come in the way that we desire. I don't want us to leave here thinking that anything we ask, we will receive. But remember this, 
the answer will come. It may not be in the way that we want it to come, but God is faithful. God is faithful. That's why Jesus says, what things soever, when, uh, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you have it and you will. He's not a liar. God is not a liar. So if God said it will be, then folks, it's going to be. But then we've got to remember that we need to be connected with this great God. Again, I'm going to jump into that on tomorrow, God's willing. So, so we need to understand that there are times when the answers will not come in the way we desire because the asking is not according to God's will. We think of mm. folks like Moses who wanted to enter Canaan. We think of Jesus who prayed for the bitter cup to pass. We think of David who prayed that the life of his son that was born with uh, Bathsheba would be spared. Or Paul, mm. when he prayed, the thorn would be, you know, would be taken from him, taken out of his flesh. It would be removed. We think of all of those. And, 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 and yet they were servants of the most high God. The question is, did God answer their prayer? Can I tell somebody that God answered them? He may not have answered in the way that they wanted him to, but he answered what they hey. says. I prayed, but he says, my grace is sufficient. That was an answer. Jesus said, let this come pass. But what Jesus did. Okay. He came to die. He came to die. What did God do? In the midst of it all, the servant of the Lord tells us that God sent mm. angels ooh, to bear up the son. Are you with me? Moses may not have made it into Canaan, but we are told in scripture, Jesus, that Moses was there on the mm. Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. You're listening to me. So we may not get the answer in the way that we prayed, but it doesn't mean that God does Amen. not answer us. God is not a reluctant God, nor an, un, nor an unreasonable father that he would listen to his children crying out sincerely to him and not say a word. That is not who God is. We serve a good God. We serve a faithful God. We talk about it in Isaiah oh, chapter 53. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Hey. Stripes we are healed. Why? It's because he loves us, folks. And when he tells mm -hmm. us that what things soever we desire, we ought to pray and we ought to ask and we ought to believe. He will do it. He'll do it because he knows it is for his glory and the good of his people. So God will respond. And though the answer may be delayed or may not come in the way it should, know that delay is not a denial. Never look at delay as a Hallelujah. denial. It, it, that God is doing something. You see, we are after the blessings and God is after the heart. <laughs> you see, we, we want the blessings that God mm. wants us. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Prayer is appointed to obtain an answer. Ask and you receive. Jesus in speaking these words, what Jesus did was pledged that those who act in accordance with this counsel or with his will shall never come up short. The certainty of answered prayer rests absolutely on the authority of Jesus. We must understand that delays do not mean denial. Are you hearing me this morning? What do we have to what seem like denials are often the grinding and the sharpening of our faith until our very life seems to depend upon the granting of our prayer. It was something like that with Anna. You remember Hannah in, in um, 1 Samuel, Samuel, Samuel chapter 1? Yeah, where, where she prayed for a son uh -huh. and it just didn't come and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed until she started praying to God, if you give it to give, give me a child, I will give the child back to you. Remember at those times, the Bible said, every man did what was right in their own eyes. God needed a prophet, I, um, Anna needed a son. God needed a judge, a ruler for his people, and Anna needed a son. And God waited until Anna got to the place where she was willing to give the gift back to God. And then God blessed her. Sometimes we pray because we want it to heap on our own selfishness, to remove our own shame. God wants to bless us because he wants the blessing to bring him glory. And so God will allow us to go through the fire sometimes. And God will allow the answer not to come at the time we think it should come. But as we continue to pray and as we continue to ask and as we continue to seek and to knock, God will allow the answer to come when it brings the highest glory to himself and the greatest good to his people. 
people. I'm going to end here because our time is gone. I know we came to pray and we've got to pray. So listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Prayer is more than just granting a request. Prayer is a means of building a relationship between God and man. It's a deepening mm -hmm. of our commitment to God. I want to pick that up on tomorrow. I want to see you back on tomorrow. Tell somebody about it and let's come to hear a little bit more about prayer. Sorry. You can't afford to miss tomorrow. God Sorry. bless us. God bless us. God bless us. My phone is making noise here. God bless us. Amen. Father in heaven. We thank you so much for your grace. We thank you as your people move and separate into their teams to pray. Hear the cries of their hearts and grant them according to your will and your timing, that which they seek, that your name will be glorified. Bless your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, saints. God bless you.